My parents moved to Boston, speaking very little English, as a young married couple with my older sister in tow, because they believed that there would be more opportunities here for them than there were in Puerto Rico, where they're originally from. You'll probably find out soon what you'll read in the papers is other people have more money than me. That's going to be the whole way through. Right? So don't, if you're getting worried about that money competition, I'm going to tell you right now, let it go. We're not going to win it. But what's important, what we need, is for this to become a real campaign where people really see that, you know, when they go to vote, if they make the choice to vote for us, that they feel like they're voting for themselves. Mm -hmm. But they feel like they're voting for their families. That's a good quote. Right? That they feel like they're, they're voting for their own children. They really feel like they're voting for the future of the city. Now you're going to see TV commercials. I know it. It just won't be mine. But here's what I know. One conversation at the doorstep beats a TV commercial any day. Felix is the only candidate that understands issues facing youth. You know, and I was particularly talking about it in light of Trayvon, but he's the only one who's actually worked with youth in the city, you know, his entire life, and he grew up in the city, and has had a set of positive strategies and solutions working with young people so that they don't face violence. So he's worked on youth violence issues, but he's also worked on youth jobs, making sure that teenagers have jobs in the summer, that they have work, they have a place to go, they have income in their pocket, they feel good about themselves and they have confidence. And also, he spends a lot of time with the young people as a coach in, you know, Little League, working with young people. And he's seen these youth do well through some of the work he's done, and he's seen some of them who have faced violence, and he knows what it's like to work with families and young people who are dealing with those crises. I believe that uh, mental health is at the root of a lot of the things we worry about. Uh, now, this is a general statement, and I recognize that. It's not at the root of everything we worry about, but it's at the root of a whole lot of it. Violence, uh, substance abuse, and in fact suicides, and more suicides than homicides. Uh, and, and that's just completed, that's not attempted. Right? So we, when we worry about these three things that are so prevalent in our name, and actually uh, low educational attainment in our schools, also is a result of some mental health issues. And what is it? It's mental health issues that are undiagnosed and untreated. There's a stigma attached to mental health. I'm a lifelong asthmatic, and I'm very comfortable talking about it. But if I had a mental health issue, do you think I would share it? My first summer job, I was 14 years old, uh, working for the Food Project, which is now in uh, Upham's Corner. I needed that job. My family needed me to have that job. And in fact, I didn't get to keep those paychecks. I turned those into my family, and we used them to help pay the bills. But within that job, I learned a lot of things that you don't necessarily learn in our public schools, which include how to behave appropriately at work. Right? How to show up on time to work. How to speak to your supervisor. How to work with others. My new friend Casey asked me if I would support making sure that there is a, a Boston Public Library that's staffed and open and serving the residents of Chinatown. And my answer is of course, and to show the commitment to this, uh, we'll be signing the pledge now. <laughs> I think we have to completely look at the curriculum in our high schools today and make sure they're preparing children for the jobs of tomorrow and not for the jobs of yesterday. He's creating a Felix fan keychain. Um, oh, what's most interesting is he's doing all this technology right here in the neighborhoods and bringing this technology to the neighborhoods where young people, 19, 13, 9, all can realize that science, technology, engineering, math are fields that not only uh, are available, but available for real, right in their neighborhoods, and that they can do it, and then they can enter into that industry, uh, or choose that as uh, a path in life, but only if they're introduced to it, and that's what's happening here. Well, my name is Jimmy Will Stephenson, and I have been working in the Fab Labs um, for about eight years now, since 2005, and um, I really found it to be a really, really great opportunity. I mean, it, it, for, if you're if you're a person who wants to make things, or who has ideas, this is absolutely the place to be. I mean, I found it to be really um, just enlightening because it's like you know how a lot of times you'll just have these thoughts where you, where you think, hey, this would be kind of cool to make. In the Fab Lab, you can actually just come and make it. There are really few places in the world where you can really just think of something and then have it. All the this is kind of crazy. 
all the mechanical parts to this were actually done in six hours, from thought to actually uh, on, on prototype. My question is, uh, the, uh, the the Board of Education and the curriculum that's in place, uh, the people that sit on the Board of Education are not uh, educators, you know, teachers, etc. Uh, there are no uh, parents there. And I just think that with the city being uh, uh, multi-ethnic, multilingual, that our kids should be required to learn to speak a second language from Head Start or uh, from preschool, you know, into school so that we can be a stronger community and the mayor has not done anything about that situation. I want to know where you stand if you're elected on revitalizing bilingual education for all students. I appreciate that. I can even answer that question in Spanish if you'd like. <laughs> uh, you know, we have models that work. You know, the, the, and I'm thinking of you, but it's in, your, in the neighborhood you work in. The Hernandez School in Eggleston Square. Every child that graduates the Hernandez School, that's a that's elementary school, graduates bilingual in both English and Spanish. Not just the Latino kids. Every child that graduates the Hernandez School graduates bilingual in both English and Spanish. Now, do Latino parents who speak Spanish as their first language want their children to go there? Of course they do. But you know what they found out? So do monolingual parents whose children only speak English, because they know that it's to the advantage of the of the of, of that child to come out speaking two languages. So there's a way to listen. How long get into that school? I know this because there's five of us in my family. All of us went to the Boston Public Schools, and none of us can get in. Every one of us tried to get in, but we can't get in, right? So, what what does that tell you? That tells you your parents are voting with their feet, and that we should be having much more dual language schools in our city. At the moment, we only have three. Uh, I, we should be double digits, if not close to 50, and it shouldn't just be Spanish. I really do believe in bilingualism. I think we have to run away from the monolingual movement and realize that we live in a global society and that every child who can speak a second language, third language, fourth language is actually eminently more employable, exponentially so. How, uh, how would you approach the lack of affordable housing for the city? And, and how would you encourage um, so the, the question is around the Boston Redevelopment Authority. So I make no leaps of logics. But the Boston Redevelopment Authority will now be referred to by me as the BRA. What the BRA is for the city, it does its development and its planning. Um, it's a quasi uh, government agency. Uh, and so the oversight of it is the mayor appoints a, a board appointed by the mayor. I think the governor gets one person, the mayor gets six. But even their budget doesn't go through the city council and it doesn't have to be um, uh, uh, public because of that separation. It's a state created agency. That's just me to give a description of who we're talking about. What would I do? She said uh, that they have a lot of same development projects in our city. That's how you describe them. I'm going to take it one step further. They have every bit of every say on development projects in our city. They think they do something well. Here's what they do well. They know how to build a building pretty well, whether you like it or not, right? <laughs> what they don't do well is community input, community say and planning, and how <clears throat> neighborhoods should look based by... Remember the first principle, who knows better what's good for Dorchester than the people who live and work in Dorchester? I believe that. You have to be intentional about that. I don't know if the BRA uh, believes it that well. I would split the powers up. I would take planning all out of the BRA. So community planning would not be there. You wouldn't have development and planning in the same agency. Um, I don't mean to get in the weeds. So the BRA has been around since the 1957. Uh, They've been doing planning and development under the same agency since 1957. And it is such a good idea that there is not a single other city in the country who does that. <laughs> and they could have copied us since 1957, but they haven't. Boston's done a lot of things. We started public schools. Everyone copied that, right? No one copied the BRA. So planning I would take out. I've been planning in my mind that I think I would put it in DND, but I want it out. I want neighborhoods to lead that process right those who live and work in neighborhoods to lead what that neighborhood can look like how does it grow uh, and how do we move forward once that plan gets done then you send it to the development side to develop the plan 
right? So that way development doesn't lead to planning, but in fact planning leads the development. I think that's good for the community, but you know what else I think? I think that's good for developers, because now it's not based on who you know, it's based on the merit of the project, right? So I think for developers it's good, because they don't have to like, again, here's that phrase I'm saying, depend on the benevolence of the next mayor. Um, I might be the only person running for mayor actively trying to make the job less powerful. I'm giving up how a billion dollars gets decided on where we deposit it. I think everyone here could pick up the power there that you could have. And I'm giving up, uh, as mayor, currently now, ultimate decision on how stuff gets developed and where things get placed and saying it belongs to community. I'm very comfortable doing that because I think it makes our neighborhood stronger and it makes our city stronger. Um, but it's, it's, if you're looking for something unique about me in this race, there's one. All right, so first off, um, I don't know if everyone noticed, but on the Herald uh, earlier this week, we talked about how um, is really the secret to our campaign is that we're knocking on doors, we're talking to voters, and we're having those face-to-face fa -face conversations with people, and that's how we're going to win this race. So that's why we have all these canvas packets out today for people to go out so we could talk to people, talk to our neighbors about why we're supporting Felix. On top of that, we also have a flyer coming up um, for a town hall meeting that we're going to have here, right here in Jamaica Plain on Tuesday um, around Invest in Boston, where Felix believes that we need to invest in all of our communities and he has a plan to do that. And that's by taking the money that we have invested in banks today and only putting it into the banks that are investing in our communities, they're lending to small businesses, to creating jobs, um, and to qualified homeowners to strengthen our housing market. Um, overall, it will help our communities thrive and that's what Felix is all about. And so we do have the flyers in here um, so make sure that when you go out and you're talking to people that you also let them know about this. This is a very real plan that he has to help um, our local economy. Uh, but again, this is how we are going to win. We are not going to have the most money um, and we are more focused on having people than we are having money. Voters will make decisions on whatever information they have. Right? They'll make decisions on whatever information they have. And if the only information they have they get from a TV commercial, then yes, they'll likely make a decision based on what they see on a TV commercial. But we know that if the information they get comes from a human being who cares about the city like they do, who's talking to them about a campaign in which they can see themselves in, then that's going to be the most valuable piece of information they're going to receive. And so that's what these canvases are. They're going to be hard, you're going to sweat, you're going to be tired, you're going to hit doors and no one's home. You're going to hit doors and and, and you know they're home, they're going to open the door. That's part of this, right? Because we're not just trying to win an election, we're trying to now re-engage residents of Boston in the future of this city, and it's going to take some time. So in the context of political campaigns, uh, starting in 2001 when my father first ran for city council at large, I've been involved in the campaigns and we would do uh, door to doors and uh, lit drops and phone calling and I like to put the signs up because I like you know so things like that there was things you like there's things you do because you want it to get done and one of the things that you do is you go door to door and sometimes it's just I gotta get it done I want to support my candidate in this case my family um, and other times you 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 get responses from people that keep you fueled like there's a connection that we often don't get when we don't know our neighbors when we don't have conversations with the people that live in our communities and going door to door lets you not only introduce yourself but to say well you know here's something you can look at here's something you can think about um, and just have that contact I think people really really like it it's, it's funny uh, overall I see most people that come to the door you know because they're gonna be people who don't but most people come to the door they want an interaction with someone they want to know why are you here what's going on and 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 I think that's really like telling about a, a city that is not it's, it's not really asleep it's very awake and and you know we have we have people who are saying like you know what can we do next what's gonna how will we you know uh, Felix says forward how will we move forward and so how can we move forward with Felix with community and door to door for me today especially I'm feeling like ah it's invigorating because you get good uh, vibes from people who are like yeah of course you know I'm with Felix I followed him I'm with him and then other times you get to put people on like you get to <laughs> you get to say things like oh you know this is my brother I'm your neighbor boom check that out and I, I most of everything that's in his information speaks for him 
he's not the kind of person that that uh, ducks things. He, he says exactly where he stands, and so it's really easy to promote someone that has their so forefront where where they stand that you don't have to, you know, that you don't have to kind of try to sell anything. You just give it to them. So. Some people are going to be very excited about it and immediately going to be like, oh yeah, Felix, we're good. Some people say, I think I vote for him. Most people are going to say, I don't know. Mm. Most people are going to mm -hmm. say, I don't know. Some will say no, right? And the nice thing about this country, you could, you could be with whoever you want to be with. You know, and that's okay. Um, but most are going to say, I don't know. That's as important to us, the I don't know, as the yes. Because maybe it's the first step to yes. Maybe it's the first step to yes. What you're trying to do is not necessarily get them to say, yes, I'm with Felix. We want that. But you want them to have an open mind about this campaign. You want them to get to know who we are. And we think that when, that if people approach us with an open mind and that they start to think about the campaign, that they, they're going to be with us. Because you know, we're the campaign that's thinking about how do we include everybody in the process. And that's what we're doing today. So when we say we believe everyone deserves a voice in our city, that doesn't happen by accident. It doesn't happen because you wish it so. It happens by intention, right? It happens by going out and actively soliciting people's participation in our campaign and when we win in our city, in our government, and how we move forward. And so that's what you're doing today. This is really one strong step. It's not just about electing us. Because of course we want to win. But we want to win to do good things. And I believe you can only do good things if you include people in the process. This could be the first time in a lot of people's time that someone's actually hit their doorstep to talk to them about the future of the city. And that's powerful by itself. My name is Joshua Mejia. I'm 22 years old. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, specifically Hyde Park. I've always played baseball as a kid as in the Regan Youth League. Felix Arroyo was my coach from the age of 13 up until about 16, 17. Playing baseball, me and my older brother Armin, he's about two years older than me. We would always play in the backyard at home. Um, we signed up for the Regan Youth League at about at the age of seven. And up until 16, 17, I was playing in Regan Youth League. I'd play at school, play at the yard, play at the baseball field near the house. It's something that we always did throughout the summer. And then in the winter, we'd be indoors at basketball courts, playing catch, working on our hitting. It's just something that we always did and it's just how we spend our time. Playing baseball with Felix was a night and day difference between other coaches that I had. Not only was Felix well versed on the baseball field, but he was always concerned with how things were going outside of the game and how everything was going at home and with school. He always wanted to make sure that everything was good at school. I remember one time we were going for a, uh, a trip to Six Flags and I couldn't go that year because I had a big project due the next day. So the next year, we had another Six Flags trip, and Felix calls me up to tell me about it. He says, Josh, make sure you have all your homework done because you're coming this year. It was just those little things that Felix was always um, paying attention to and was always aware of, and he always made sure that everyone was taking care of the things they needed to do outside of the baseball field. And that's the biggest difference with Felix, that he always made sure that everyone was on the same page and that baseball was important to them but it wasn't the number one thing. So when Felix first started coaching he had a little red Ford Mustang that he'd always show up and it was the coolest thing because it was like this is a baseball coach he has a sports car he comes in his trunk is packed with equipment helmets bats everything it, like it barely fit he would come into practice and games full of kids in the car and then one day he shows up in this SUV, this Toyota Highlander. It was like, man, you're not the cool coach anymore. You're like a soccer mom now. And basically, like, that kind of shows what type of person Felix is because he, was, he made the sacrifice because he knew that these kids on our team, they didn't have the opportunity to maybe have a parent go to the games, bring them to the games and practices. So he would pick kids up. And by getting that SUV, you know, I think for Felix it was important because he was able to help out even more by picking up kids, making sure that they made it to the games and to the practices, and brought them home. Felix did not leave the field until everyone was picked up, and the kids that weren't picked up, he would give them a ride. So that kind of sums up what Felix Arroyo is in my eyes. 
I'm watching the Puerto Rican Parade in Boston. Just saying hello to people from Puerto Rico, everyone else who's here celebrating our culture and just having a great time. So much fun! <laughs> Our neighborhoods are safe and where people are. We are actually, our eyes and our ears are what keep us safe and our relationships with each other. When our social capital goes up, so our crime rates go down, right? And so we have, we've got to create situations where social capital is increased. I think arts and, and, and cultures is sort of like the soul of a community and that's how you create that social capital. You know what gets in your way of having that real public art festivals and so difficult <laughs> with permitting mm -hmm. in the city. Yeah, permitting. <laughs> but it isn't just art folks who are struggling with permitting, it's businesses struggling with permitting. Can you imagine trying to put a play uh, in Franklin Park? I know a couple of people have tried it. How'd that work out? Not very well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice, there's actually a theater in, in, in yeah. Franklin Park. I know, that's why I said Outdoor it. Theater. Yeah. yeah, that's why I said it. And we don't use it. Mm -hmm. Because every time someone tries to use it, we essentially say no without saying no, right? We say, oh, you want to do that? Okay, great. There's 18 things to fill out. And then you come back and you do it. And then we go, oh, we forgot the 19th. We forgot to give you the 19th. And you come back and you do it. And you go, oh, the person who could approve that doesn't work on Thursdays, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. That's just a mess. And so it's about streamlining our permitting process so that these things that are clearly public goods, clearly, and frankly, for the most part, at no cost to the city, creating a public good. Um, can happen. I was lucky enough to draw your name, Felix. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me lucky. <laughs> um, when a business closes and leaves a vacant storefront, our residents can't support an empty business. The permitting process for a new business can oftentimes be daunting and far uh, too much time goes by before the new business is up and running and then these seniors here in this room can go shopping in, in that business. As mayor, what can you do to speed up the process of assisting new businesses to get up and running faster? Thank you for the question, Mary. Uh, we have got to support our small businesses for a number of reasons. One, strong neighborhoods always have strong small business districts. They're related. Two, 70% of everybody who lives in this country works for a small business. So by supporting small business, you're in fact supporting jobs. She's correct. Our permitting process is much too convoluted, much too confusing. I've toured 25 different business districts in the city of Boston, in the neighborhoods. I've already done that. I've talked to the business owners and I've asked them, what can we do to make it easier for you to operate and to hire people and to grow? Two things, permitting and access to credit. As mayor, we will streamline the permitting process. It will be very clear what permits you need to open and how you get them. Community know their role, because community has the right to know what's coming to their neighborhoods and have a say. And we will do that and we'll streamline the permitting so it's not convoluted and confusing anymore. We'll also make sure small business owners have access to credit. We do that by taking the billion dollars that we have in banks today as a city and only doing business with banks that will lend to the small businesses in our neighborhood taking a billion dollars and leveraging that towards strong neighborhoods and ensuring that our businesses can survive, can grow, and can open. I am committed to the small businesses in our neighborhoods because I'm committed to small businesses, but because I'm committed to community. Thank you. I want to that when you're in the city, you need help. First, you need to speak in the language that you confide. And second, you need to be clear what is the process that exists and how it is that you have to do that process. And we have to finish those days that can last more than one year to open a business. Un negocio se debe poder abrir en meses, no en años. Y yo sé que cada día que, que pasa, que usted no tiene su negocio abierto, está perdiendo dinero. Cuando nosotros llegamos a este país, sea de Puerto Rico, de Honduras, o de Colombia, o de Cuba, sea de su país, de El Salvador, nosotros creamos nuestros propios propio trabajos. Eso que hacemos, todos ustedes lo hicieron. Nosotros creamos nuestros propios propio trabajos. Es también apoyar al inmigrante cuando uno apoya la pequeña empresa.
Y eso yo lo entiendo en mi corazón. Usted está mirando a un joven que los padres míos tienen la misma historia que ustedes tienen. Well, seeing Felix as a city councilor and now running for mayor, it's it's really great because you're able to see how someone is able to transfer their skills as a baseball coach into a leader in the community and a leader in the city. And those skills that he has, he's able to bring them over into the politics of it. And really, you get to see what kind of person Felix is. And, and it really shows when you see him in interviews or when he's talking to others, when he's reaching out to, to people in the neighborhoods knocking door to door and doing the canvassing, that you're really able to see what type of person Felix is. And it's really getting out there, getting to know people, seeing what the issues are in the communities, and doing what he can to fix those issues and, and find solutions for those people. And I think that's what Felix is really, really strong at. You know, this building is going to create zero utility bills. It actually gives back energy. So in the summer months when it's, it's creating its own energy, it'll actually give back energy and you'll get credits on these with the utility companies. I think it's probably the future of new construction, right? Like if you can create homes that have zero utility bills, who wouldn't want that? You know, and then it's good for our environment. In our countries, where we're from, part of campaigning is uh, they make it really fun. It's actually a good mm -hmm. time. And it's, yeah. it's really one long party, frankly, and in the sense that it's about family and community coming mm -hmm. together and feeling good about it. And they do that with music. Mm -hmm. unete, unete. A nuestro feliz arroyo para que ocupe la silla de la alcaldía de Boston. Únete, únete. A nuestro feliz arroyo para que ocupe la silla de la alcaldía de Boston. Feliz está preparado de la cabeza a los pies. Él te atenderá muy bien en español y en inglés. Escuchará la luz tendido desde el principio hasta el fin. Por todos los beneficios que no puedes conseguir. Únete, únete a nuestro feliz arroyo para que ocupe la silla de la alcaldía de voto. Únete, únete a nuestro feliz arroyo para que ocupe la silla de la alcaldía de voto. A la pasión en cultura, música también folclore, así como los deportes de todo pueblo y nación. Con feliz podrán contar desde el pequeño al mayor, porque feliz lo que quieres para vos con lo mejor. Únete, únete a nuestro feliz arroyo para que ocupe la silla de la alcaldía de Boston. Únete, únete a nuestro feliz arroyo para que ocupe la silla de la alcaldía de Boston. Como concejal de Boston, trabajando para ti, ha demostrado experiencia, talento y mucho valor. Por eso es que te pedimos que no te quedes en casa y le des tu voto a Feli en la próxima primaria. Únete, únete a nuestro feliz arroyo para que ocupe 